we are being bombarded by different AI tools that have come onto the market and that are offering different things. And it's so hard to stick to one. It is so hard to find one that can take you from the research stage to the point where you've edited and written your essay. In today's video, I have discovered unriddle.ai and unriddle is an AI platform that helps you read more efficiently. It's a tool that helps you read, write and learn faster. You can also interact with documents such as PDF research papers through the AI assistant so you can quickly find and understand information. In today's video, I'm going to be going through the nine steps to go from step one, defining and finding your research topic to step nine, writing your final draft and submitting. Step one is defining your research topic. So you've probably been given a topic, a research question, or even just a kind of research area. Before you even delve into trying to find research papers or writing an outline, it's really important that you have very narrowly defined what your topic is about. When this topic is too broad or too narrow, it can make it really hard to write a strong piece of writing and to find the right critique and discussion points. Try to think about existing research that you know of. And this takes me on to step two. Step two is where you conduct a comprehensive literature search. And for this, you need to use academic databases. And these databases are, for example, Google Scholar or PubMed. And these are databases where you can just put in your topic. So remember, you're keeping it quite narrow, you're keeping it quite um, refined. You're putting those keywords into the databases and pulling out some of the research papers that come out of it. And at this point, let's not think too much about whether they're relevant or not. Let's just get at least, let's say 10 to 20 research papers that have an appropriate title, that their abstract sounds good, and the keywords match up with your keywords for your research question. And this takes us on to step three. Here you want to actually evaluate and select your sources. And here is where you're going to be using AI to speed up the process of evaluating the papers. But one really cool way that you can actually ask any question to any research paper is by using Unriddle. I have opened Unriddle and it's very easy to upload any research paper, upload any PDF document. And I've uploaded this one. It's a paper about the effect of coffee on blood pressure and cardiovascular disease in hypertensive individuals. It's a systematic review. Now, if you know anything about systematic reviews, you know that they are long and they contain a lot of information. So what I've said is what are the main takeaways from this paper? Or what is the main takeaway of this paper? And it's given me a very nice summary that's understandable. It's concluded what the authors were saying in this research paper. So this allows you to select, okay, this is actually going to be really useful for me. Let me save this as one of the papers that I'm going to be using. And this helps you evaluate and select your sources. Another thing that you can do is you can say, explain this paper to me in the simplest way possible. Okay, here's a simple breakdown. The short-term effects, the long-term effects, the effects on heart health, and then what they've looked at and what are the main takeaways. I've also gone on and asked about the challenges and some more details. And this is an, an ex, such an excellent way because as you'll see in the next couple steps, we are now going to try to evaluate and write down a sort of essay outline. And something like this will really help because I can already see that I should have a paragraph about the short-term effect, a paragraph about the long-term effect. And it's a, yeah, like I said, a fantastic way of just breaking that down for you in really simple English. Step four is to analyze and synthesize the literature. So let's say you evaluated everything and you've said, okay, I'm going to keep 15 of them. From those 15, you need to find kind of common themes about them. So here is where you're synthesizing and you're actually trying to group things to form a bit of a research map. And this is all coming together to build that outline. This is done so easily on Unriddle. So let me show you how you can do this. So you basically just select, uh, let's say I wanna select these four papers, then say to group them up together. And you can do this for 15 of your research papers, group them all together, and then start to ask them questions as a group. I'm also going to rename them. So I'm going to say coffee and lifestyle papers because I might have different chapters that I'm writing about. And now you can ask the group a question. So I've said, what are some common challenges faced in this group of studies? So let's take a look at this. I think this is gonna be 
so valuable, especially when thinking about limitations and critical reviewing, getting you to that sort of first class grade. Limited experimental data on very high caffeine doses. So that could be, okay, so I know that there has been limited data on high caffeine doses. Why don't I suggest that as a gap in literature? Right, so I'm going to look at a very high, because actually most people these days drink four, five, six cups a day. So the fact that there's not much on the high level means that there's a big population that has been missed out in research. So that's really interesting to think about. And you can ask these questions to the group. Another, another thing that you can do is you can use this graph button here. So I'm going to click on this graph and what it will do is put all of my research papers in a graph that gives me or shows me the links to each other. Step number five, the next step is to start to structure. And we want to think a little bit about organization. Are you organizing by themes? Are you organizing chronologically? Are you organizing by methods or by result? And what you can do here with Unriddle is you can open a new note. So, so I'm writing about the things that I've read, the papers that I have um, kind of analyzed and interrogated through the chat in Unriddle. I just love that I can see everything on one screen. I know it's such a basic thing i know it seems like such a like yeah like an irrelevant thing it has nothing to do with ai itself but it's the fact that i can see everything on one screen i can see my research paper i can chat to it over here in the middle and then in the last kind of screen i can see the whole plan and the outline and what i've written okay so one of the things i'm going to say is i'm writing a review uh, review paper. Let me say review paper. Give me a structure, an outline for an essay on this topic. So again, Unriddle is going to be scanning all four of these research papers in this group and giving me a summary based off of what has been discussed in all four. Let's take a look. It says here's a suggested structure, obviously the introduction, the methods, um, acute effects of caffeine, yep, long-term effects. So that links up to before, like short-term effects, long-term effects. It's clear that it hasn't missed anything out based off what it has just read. The step six is to start to write your first draft. So as you are building your outline, you want to start to pull out information and write your first draft. You want to make sure that you have a clear introduction, clear body paragraphs, and a clear conclusion. In the introduction, make sure that you have a sentence or two that sets the stage for what's to come. What are your research aims? What is the gap in literature? What are you writing about exactly? And what is the structure of your essay? A lot of students don't include this, and it's very obvious when a student has included it because it really sounds good and it gives the reader a nice kind of uh, format for what they're going to be reading about in the kind of sections and paragraphs to come. And remember when it comes to critical discussion, you also want to ensure that you're adding critique that not only skims across the surface of the research paper, but also goes into the strengths and weaknesses. And this is something that, as you can see, you could do really easily with Unriddle. Now, this is a new feature that Unriddle has just released, which I think is really cool and just adds to how useful and how inclusive that this tool is. I do need to reference it. I don't exactly know where the reference comes from or I want to find a reference or citation for this particular statement. What I can do is I can just highlight it like this, click on this button at the bottom that says actions and it takes me to a few different actions that I can um, select and you can choose whether you want to find the citations from online databases or if you want to use your own library papers. I think this is really helpful because I usually like to cite only like more recent papers, but let's just go with the most relevant one. So this is the most relevant one. It actually does match up to do with caffeine. Yeah, okay, this sounds like it is very, very similar. And then I can even open it up. Of course, you should really be looking at what you are citing. Make sure that it is relevant to what you're actually writing about. And then I'm going to click on cite. And let's see what this has done. There you go, fantastic. So it has cited it for me. And you can see that there's a little number one and it's added the reference for me at the bottom of the um, notes as well, just so that when you come to put everything together, your citations are all there. I think this is great for not only when you're writing your uh, essay, but also when you're planning, because you can kind of just like throw in some citations so then you can use it later. Using this action menu, I'm also able to add the paper to 
to my library. So at this point, I realize, okay, this is the research paper that I want to cite. I can say, okay, let me just add it to my library for now, which ensures that I can then cite it at a later point or use it at a later point. So there's two options, citing it directly or actually adding it to your library and citing it later. And step seven, once you've written everything and you've got a somewhat rough first draft, you want to revise and edit. Here is where you look at what you've written, you think about your coherence, the flow, go back and check your critical discussion. If you haven't critiqued enough or you haven't kind of given different alternative discussion points, go back to Unriddle, ask questions that try to pull out that information. Again, what you can do using Unriddle is go to the actions menu, highlight what you want to select and say, for example, improve it for me. And you'll see that it can actually improve what you've written. Um, and this can kind of just tweak to get your text from a rough first draft to a pretty good first draft. Before you are completed, you want to finalize your citations and references. If you're using a tool like Unriddle, then it, everything will be there for you. And then step nine, once you've done everything, is to submit and share your final draft. So I've really shown you how you can use one AI tool to get from the stage of researching, finding research papers, then analyzing it, evaluating it, figuring out whether this is a research paper that you want to keep or not, then interrogating the research paper, asking questions about it, and then analyzing and synthesizing Sizing the literature and developing a structure for your review, writing the first draft, editing the first draft, and then finally submitting. And all of this can be done with one AI tool. If you enjoyed this video and you liked seeing the Unriddle tutorial, then do leave me a comment down below and feel free to go ahead and try it for yourself for free. Uh, the link will be in my description down below. And I really hope to see you in my next video. Okay, bye.